from me to you. Um, 2021 has been off to a flying start, pretty uh, full of events um, in the world, not so much in ours, we're still cooking. Today's show is a vegetarian special. Brinjal, eggplant, aubergine. Today we're doing an aubergine salad, which uh, I think it has its roots somewhere in the Mediterranean islands. I'm not too sure. Um, Sudarshana Bhakti taught me this recipe and it's a really yummy recipe. The thing is, uh, Amit's New Year resolution has been to lose weight. So we figured the only way to lose weight was to cut out as much carbs as we could so we've been doing a lot of soups and salads and stuff like that. Um, though to confess, the salads have had some meat in it. Today we're doing a vegetarian special and uh, it's going to be aubergine salad, some cream of broccoli soup. It's not as bad as it sounds, it's very yummy. And we're going to toss up some potatoes with parsley and we're going to do makika bread, corn bread. Yeah, there's a lot of makki going around, it's winter and I'm sure everybody must be freaking out having makki ki roti and sarso ka saag. But uh, I discovered cornbread some time ago and I really love it. It's sweet, it's almost like a cake and it goes very well with a host of uh, continental dishes like chili con carne and um, soups and uh, potatoes and all sorts of things. So today we're going to do an eggless cornbread. I thought I'd get the cornbread out of the way. Um, it will basically be in the oven, um, baking away. So you need a cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour, one cup of maki kata, corn flour, corn meal, two-third cup sugar. Remember, I said it's almost like a cake. Two teaspoons baking powder. 1 teaspoon salt and I'm going to mix all this up. These are my dry ingredients. Before I do the wet ones, I'm going to prep the pan. Where is it? I think this is an 8 inch pan. I'm not too sure. Never measured them. But it's the standard pan in which I do most of my cakes and uh, other bakes. And I have made cornbread in this before. So I've put a little oil in this and a little maida and I'm just making sure that it uh, doesn't stick. I'm also going to line it with some parchment. Okay, so that's ready. Now let me get some milk. One. And a quarter. Milk, one third cup oil. I'm using olive oil. Um, you can use canola. Um, I don't know if uh, sunflower oil would be good, but olive oil gives it a nice flavor. So try and see if you can do it with olive oil. Butter, of course, would make it unhealthy and uh, go against the diet that Amit is on. I'm really hoping he'll eat this bread. Uh, he normally doesn't like cornbread, but uh, maybe I'll be lucky today. I put the oven to heat at the uh, bake mark, uh, 200, and uh, the timer's on 40 minutes because, uh, again, I'm lazy about changing the timer. So as soon as this is mixed and ready, I shall be putting it in to the oven. And 20, 25 minutes is normally what it takes. Of course, you need to do the toothpick test to make sure that it's fully done. You know what the toothpick test is, right? You poke it with a toothpick and if it comes out clean, it's ready. Make sure you get all the lumps out. So now that this is mixed and there aren't any lumps, I shall pour it in. Just tap it a little to make sure you don't have any uh, air bubbles in there. And I'm going to put a little corn on top so that we all know it's cornbread. Uh -huh. And 
This will go into the center of the oven and bake. Putting it at uh, 180. The other thing I'm going to get out of the way is uh, the broccoli because uh, this will need to cool a bit before we can shove it in the mixi. I'm going to reserve a few of these florets for the top. Again, so that everybody knows it's broccoli soup and not asparagus. A cup of water and this will just go sit on the gas and get boiled. Nothing much to see there. I shall put this on the gas and be back to do the rest. Right now in the broccoli soup, I've just uh, chopped the broccoli and added a little, a little water and I'm pressure cooking it, uh, probably give it a couple of whistles and I'll do the seasoning and the flavoring once uh, I've pureed it and I know exactly how thick the consistency is going to be. So that's step two. So the next thing we're getting out of the way is the potatoes. Uh, the way I'm doing the potatoes is I'm just going to cut them in half. You're getting these lovely little baby potatoes nowadays and uh, they really taste good, much better than the, you know, the normal regular potatoes and uh, they're very easy to cook as well, uh, whether it's continental or Indian or, I don't know, never tried Chinese. Maybe chili potatoes would be good with this. Next time. I'm not peeling these potatoes because uh, the skin is also quite yummy to eat. This is just for two of us, so that should be enough. What I'm going to do is add a little parsley to it. And I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons. Actually, maybe more. It doesn't matter if there's more oil because uh, you'll have the cornbread to mop it up with. Three spoons of oil, a little sprinkling of salt. One's not looking at these potatoes going crisp, so you can add the salt now. And then what I'm going to do is cover it and set it on the gas on, you guessed it, low fire, slow fire. And let it cook while we get the rest of the stuff going. I've only used a little bit of uh, parsley in the potatoes right now. Once it's done, I'm going to be adding a little more fresh parsley, you know, to sort of uh, make the taste a little more lively. Now the piece de resistance, the aubergine. <laughs> you need a regular, uh, this size uh, aubergine. And uh, cut them in thickish slices, not too thick. It's a very nice one, hardly any seeds if you can see. Winter is such a wonderful time for vegetables. Okay. I'm going to put a little salt on these guys. This is a really good uh, aubergine mango. Next on the list is capsicum or uh, bell pepper. I don't know. What's the fancy name for capsicum? Again, just cut them in rounds. Don't need these center thingies. Do I actually like the taste of these center things? Maybe one can preserve them and, you know, mash them up with potatoes or something. I salted the aubergine, the bengal, but I'm not salting the capsicum because it doesn't really need it. Next on the list is the tomato. Thick rounds and you'll know very soon why. And no salting the tomatoes either. I have one medium bengan here, two capsicums and I'm going to be using three tomatoes. You need firm tomatoes for this. Again, you will know the reason why very soon. And finally, some garlic. You can do it with 5-10 uh, garlic, but as you know, Amit loves his garlic, so I'll probably be using a little more. Just uh, cut them fine. 
In case you don't eat garlic, you could, I guess, avoid uh, putting garlic in this. But then uh, maybe you can find something else to flavor it with. This is the garlic, minced up. My potatoes are doing well. Let them keep cooking. This is the pan in which we're going to now fry the aubergine. Don't need too much oil, just enough to uh, sort of line the pan. Remember, brinjal tends to uh, drink a lot of oil, so just enough to sort of uh, line the pan and uh, low flame. And we're going to put these here and let them brown. The only thing this uh, recipe needs really is patience. Let me just check on this guy. Ah, looks good. Toothpick. Toothpick. Maybe a minute more, two minutes more. The broccoli is well boiled and soft. This pressure cooker is uh, as old as Amit and my relationship. This was I think one of the first things we bought, uh, mainly because of its size. It seemed like something that was appropriate for a two people household. I've pureed it. I think that's why it's called cream off. This is nicely pureed as you can see. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, I've added one cup of water and I'm going to add say half a cup of milk. If you're not on a diet, you can add cream. Uh, you just get a thicker consistency. And uh, we shall put in some pepper. And I have some wonderful vegetable stock which my friend Sureka got me from Germany. It's really yummy. But even the Maggi vegetable thing works. This is quite salty, so I'm just adding two teaspoons. If we need more, we can add more on tasting. This I'm going to simmer. Give it one boil, basically, and it will be ready. Mm. Nice. As you can see, the bengans have drunk up all the oil. Uh, these are a little overdone, but Amit likes it that way. I'm just going to add a little more oil for the other side to get done. Meanwhile, my potatoes are done totally. So let's leave them there till they're ready to dish up. And now let's go check on that cornbread. Yep, looks like it's done. Shall poke it one more time. Yeah. Now this guy just has to cool nice and firm. While the uh, aubergines are frying up, I'm going to beat up a little dahi. This is going to be my dressing for the salad. It's very thick, so I'm going to add this liquid. What I'm going to do is uh, add a little salt to it, say about half a teaspoon of the taste, and I'm going to add a little sugar to it, again maybe half a teaspoon. You could also add honey, uh, honey tastes very good in this. Uh, maybe I'll also add a little honey afterwards, let's see how sweet this gets. The sides are also done. The ones that are done, I'm going to take off and put here. The first layer is aubergine, and uh, even though I'd cut them thick, see how much they've shrunk. So thick is good. And uh, the next layer is going to be uh, capsicum, which also I'm going to saute for a little bit. And the third final layer is the tomatoes, which also get sauteed. So patience. A little more oil. The capsicum doesn't need to be laid out flat because unlike the aubergine, 
they don't drink oil so you can just uh, toss them in the oil oh smelling so yummy i love capsicum and uh, it's a very healthy thing to eat so whether you have it raw or you put it you can add it to anything and everything uh, salad paneer potatoes fish chicken I have a yummy capsicum and chicken recipe which I will share with you once this stupid bird flew goes away. Now it's time to create the capsicum layer. We shall place the tomatoes. Again, these need to be laid out flat because I want them to maintain their shapes and not get squished up. You know the first time I had fried tomato, uh, my mother had gone away on holiday uh, to Calcutta. She'd taken uh, my sister with her, so it was just dad and me left alone and I must have been around four years old or five years old and um, I was a very mommy's child kind of person so dad didn't know how to uh, you know entertain me so he made me breakfast and his specialty was fried eggs i think it stopped there i don't think he cooked anything else so we had fried eggs and toast and for the first time in my life he made me a fried tomato that was so yummy try not to cover it and cook because uh, when you cover it then uh, the tomato starts releasing water and then it becomes one sticky mess you need the tomatoes to hold shape so it's good to get firm tomatoes for this tomatoes are done uh, nicely. So there is the third layer. And now what I'm going to do is uh, in the same pan. I don't want to change pans because it's got the flavors of the tomato and the capsicum and the bengal in it. Uh, in the same pan I've heated uh, about a tablespoon of olive oil and I'm going to put this garlic in there. The flame is low. So this is just going to brown and uh, meanwhile we shall go and do something more to the salad. So I've got three layers here, the aubergine and the capsicum and the tomatoes and uh, I'm going to pour the yogurt over it. The yogurt has salt and sugar. And next, nice nutty color for the garlic and I shall switch off. And this goes on top. And what I'm going to do is add a little honey. A taste of honey, a taste much sweeter than mine. This salad is very simple, but it's really worth it because uh, somehow the yogurt and the, uh, the garlic combined with the uh, aubergine, the brinjal and the capsicum and the tomatoes, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's, it's orgasmic is the simplest way to say it. And we have our potatoes which I will just add a little parsley to, I should have chopped it up. And we have some nice broccoli soup. mop all this up and we have some nice cornbread of course cornbread goes well with some nice unhealthy butter and the more butter you put the better it tastes so should we dig in?
I think this is one of the best ways to eat broccoli because uh, it, it really lends itself to a good soup. And the bread. Mmm. I using cake. Maybe I should give this to Amit as dessert. Potato. Hmm. Potatoes are such a simple thing to cook. Too. I mean, you just need to boil them actually. They lend themselves to so many things. And now this, this is my favorite. So I'm gonna get some tomato, I'm gonna get a little capsicum, and the bengan. I shall hold the plate under me. Warning, this might get messy. Mmm. 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 Super yummy. Super yummy. Can't tell you how good that is. So this is it folks. A nice yummy full vegetarian meal. Uh, we have been doing vegetarian in the past but most of that has been Indian. So we thought since Amit sort of started the year with Mediterranean fish, I thought why not go, you know, continental on vegetarian also. And uh, this is it. And uh, even non veggies will love this, I'm sure. But if you like, you can add chicken stock to that. If you like, you can combine this with some fried chicken or not chicken and fish or whatever. Or just have it the way it is. So yummy. So next week, Amit should be back. And uh, meanwhile, why don't you guys post your New Year resolutions in the comment section below and uh, we shall hold all of you to it. Let's see how many of you take up the challenge. Come on, I dare you. <laughs>